Good evening and thank you for joining us here at KSB. Um, my name is Monica Drew and I'm an occupational therapist since 1990 and have worked at the hospital on and off for over 15 years. Uh, today we're going to talk about tips and exercises to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome and wrist pain. On this slide, you're going to see the hand and wrist anatomy. Uh, we need to remember that our hands are major instruments in our lives and the care of them allows them to care for us. Um, they're very small, intricate muscles that are in there uh, with three nerves that innervate them uh, and provide a lot of safety and security for the vast majority of us. And when they do get injured, we find out that life becomes very difficult. So I'm going to present to you some exercises and ways to stretch and maintain your hand health. Symptoms of carpal tunnel. Uh, usually if people start to notice things, they notice that they're dropping objects or they have tingling. They have to constantly shake their hands out. Sometimes it happens when you get up in the morning um, and it's usually due to the position that you're sleeping in. So you get numbness and tingling of the thumb, second, and part of the middle finger or all of the middle finger. You can have hand and pain that shoots up your forearm. You can get a burning sensation. You can have just elbow pain. Um, you can have discomfort in the wrist and the hand where they feel very stiff. Uh, weakness, grip weakness. You're holding on to something and it just kind of falls out of it. You have difficulty ma manipulating small objects such as buttoning or tying your shoes. You have a hard time making a full fist. Your fingers feel swollen even though they're really not. Uh, sometimes uh, it can do be due to hormonal changes, especially with pregnant women or women going through menopause. People talk about feeling like a lameness in their affected arm, that it feels very heavy and that it just doesn't seem to want to work. Most of these are you can get diagnosed by a doctor uh, through an EMG. There's also a uh, Tonell's test that they can do where they just tap the nerve. And um, if you have pain zings down your hand, then they know. Treatment options are surgical. Um, you can have therapy. Uh, the doctor can just issue some stretches. They can do bracing with you or a splint. The biggest thing for prevention, especially of carpal tunnel, is to make sure you're full lower portion of your arms are fully supported. So if you're sitting at the desk, you want um, from your elbows all the way down to the tips of your hands on the desk. You don't want them dragging along the keyboard or the desk or whatever it is you're doing. For people who knit or crochet, you want to make sure that your elbows are supported. So usually I tell people to have um, the heavier couch pillows that you have, the decorative pillows underneath your arms, or for women who are breastfeeding, then you get the bot pillow, I believe it's called. Um, if you're performing heavy work, you want to wear gloves such as raking, mowing the lawn, shoveling. Uh, we have, if you have gloves on, you can't squeeze your hands as tight. And that's usually when the injury happens. You want to have good body mechanics. Um, you don't want your hands in awkward positions. Either you have things fully supported underneath your hands or you have them straight up. So it's either palm up or palms to the side when you're carrying things. Good work ergonomics is um, you always want to see where you're going with your hands. So you want to push instead of pull. Um, you want to make sure that your wrists are not in an awkward position. A lot of times it happens with mechanics where they're um, having to use the torque bar uh, or machinists when they're having to get inside the machines and put their hands at funny angles. So some of the exercises for the carpal tunnel is just regular range of motion. You want to do it with an open fit hand and then with a fist. And they're just nice and slow and gentle. The wrist stretch, what you want to do is you don't want to be on your fingertips. So you want to be in the palm of your hand and you pull that wrist back. And you do the other side. You want to hold these anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds. If you're going to go down, again, don't want to be on your fingers. You want to be on the palm, the back of the hand, on both sides. The mid trap exercise, uh, we have pictures of this. I don't know if you can see it very well. You're going to lay on a pillow on your stomach if you can get there. And your hands are going to be thumb up. And you just lift your arms away from your body. So you're bringing them back. What that does is open up the pack and help 
get your shoulders stronger. A lot of times the reason we get carpal tunnel is because we like to slouch. There's the pectoral stretch where you're in the doorway and you push your way through the door while your hands stay in the door frame. Scalene stretch, you're just going to tilt your neck to the side and I'm holding my clavicle down so that I can get a better stretch. You can do it on both sides. And the nerves that you're that control the upper extremities come right through in here. So you want to make sure that's pretty well stretched. The thoracic stretch is your hands go behind your head and you just lean back. And again, it's working on your posture and making sure that everything in the upper body is opened and ready to work and it's not all crunched down. Scapular squeezes, you just sit with your elbows on your desk or on your chair arms and squeeze your shoulder blades together. And you want to hold these, the scapular squeeze for about 15 to 30 seconds because the scaps are pretty important. And as we get older, they have a tendency to get a lot weaker. For your wrist exercises, you can use a can. Pork and beans usually work the best. They're heavy solid. The liquid doesn't shake around a lot. Or you can have a one pound weight and the wrist just goes up and down in a nice slow motion. You turn it over and you're going to bring it towards your face. And you can also do it where you're shaking somebody's hand. The last one is you can get a ball anywhere, just a squeeze ball, and you don't want to squeeze it real hard. You just want to work that hand for about a minute until it gets fatigued, and you can do both of them. Wrist, a healthy wrist. Um, in your wrist, as you can see, there's not a lot of space for anything to move around. There's carpal bones right below um, the palm of your hand. And there's a transverse ligament on the top of the very palm. And then underneath it are all your tendons that move your fingers. And they are double stacked because you have ones that control the middle and the tip of your finger. So they don't have a lot of room to move in there. The median nerve goes right underneath it. And then you have carpal bones. And they usually don't move very well. So... If you get any tightness or um, tenderness in that area, the hand wants to close up. Most people will hold it in a guarded position. And instead of having it nice and open, they have a tendency to want it to look like this. This web space here is probably about one of the most important things to have. If you notice that you can't make a very good L, you probably need to stretch your web space out a little bit and then for that one you just hold here and pull it back. There's different places you can get arthritis in your hand. That's the second picture on this. Um, and these are pretty common sites. What people will notice is maybe they get a little knot on the end of their, where that joint is at, or it gets extremely tender in there. The one on the bottom for the thumb is um, CMC joint arthritis. And what you'll have a hard time doing is making a circle with your thumb. I'm looking at the pictures, making sure. Okay. Wrist stretches. Again, very easy. You want to go nice and slow. Open those fingers all the way up. And this is for the hand. And you want that, again, that web space and the thumb to make an L. Not this. We want this. All right. And then just gentle up and down, nice and slow. Same thing with the fingers. It's gentle and you're going to roll them in. I got to make sure I'm getting this. Sorry. Just nice and slow. The one on the table, what you're doing is you're putting your hands flat on the table. And when you put them flat and you just lean forward over them. Okay. You don't try to push your fingers down. I can angle that camera. Sorry. And then you turn them the other way. I have a hard time with this one. Can you get it? Got it? Good. And again, you just lean forward until you feel a stretch. This shouldn't really be very painful. It should just feel like a nice stretch. You want to hold that one just for 10 or 15, just because they're very awkward positions in that first one. The next three stretches are pretty much the same ones that we did for the carpal tunnel, except for they are up a little higher because we are going to get our fingers in this one. So you just pull them back and try to make sure you're at the joint line. 
and that you're not pushing too far. There are some people who are very hypermobile and they can really stretch their fingers back. You don't want to take them too far, about 10 degrees or so. This one is called the prayer stretch. All you do is put your hands together, slide it straight down until the palms want to come apart. If you can go up, bring it lower, just bring it lower. And you hold this one again for about 15 seconds. You come up and you bring it right back down. And I usually do like three to five stretches and I try to do mine in the morning in the shower where it's nice and warm. Okay, these are um, some that the same ones, a lot of them are as you had for the carpal tunnel, except for this time we added elbow strengthening along with it and forearm and supination, uh, excuse me, forearm supination, pronation, stretching, and then um, some external rotation for the shoulder and then elbow flexion extension. So I'm going to use the same weight for all of these exercises. So you, if you have a hammer, you can use a hammer. If you have a dumbbell, you can use a dumbbell. So for forearm and supination and pronation, what you want to do is you want to control that movement all the way through. It doesn't want to look like this. You want it to go nice and slow. You can also add for elbow flexion and extension, this. And again, you want to take it all the way out and control it all the way back in. Now, if you notice that that starts to get easy, then you can add the hammer portion of it. And that one you're going to do very quickly. And that'll get your biceps and your forearm along with your wrist. And your hand has to control this weight. For external rotation, stand up. There we go. See me? All you do is you bring them out and bring them back in. So you go nice and slow and make sure nothing is hanging down or going off to the side. For resisted elbow flexion and extension, I'm just going to change it. We're just going to come up like this. And you can do anywhere from 15 to 20 of these, a couple of sets. For elbow extension, you just bring the weight behind you. And you're going to control it all the way through and back. I'd like to thank you for your participation. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can give your physician a call and get a referral to KSB Rehab Services. Um, our phone number is below. It's 285-5591. And I'd like to thank you for joining us.